So someone wanted to know why ocular myasthenia gravis affects the eye muscles first and how that can be in patients who have generalized myasthenia that they present with ocular first and why are the eye symptoms and signs so predominant in both ocular and generalized myasthenia gravis as opposed to other parts of your body. And you should know that the extraocular muscles it are different, number one. They're different in both their composition and their metabolic demand and their receptors are different and have less reserve than the skeletal muscle. The second thing is no rest for the weary. Even at nighttime when all your other muscles get to take a little nap, your eye movements have to do rapid eye movements and are moving even when you're sleeping. And so they don't really get a rest break. And then the last thing, which is I think is probably the predominant thing in terms of the symptom of diplopia, because the ocular movements are yoked together, the muscles have to go together at the same speed, amplitude, etc. Even a small asymmetry between the right and left eye will produce notable uh, diplopia because there'll be ocular misalignment. So if you have a five or 10% decrement in your right biceps versus your left biceps, you probably won't notice it. But if you have a 10% reduction in your right medial rectus versus your left lateral rectus, you're gonna notice that right away as diplopia. And so I think the reason that ocular and generalized myasthenia have predominant eye findings is probably multifactorial. Differences in the receptors, the fiber type, the metabolic demand, differential rest rates for muscles, including rapid eye movements at night, and asymmetry it is manifesting very more, much more obviously in yoked eye muscles than in unyoked skeletal muscles.